There was something that Marty asked me to do when we were making this movie, which was he wanted the sound to match the picture. So in other words, when there's a cl big close-up of something, it gets loud. And when the guitar pans across the screen, the sound follows it and that sort of thing. And it's sort of if you turn the picture off and you just listen to the mix, it sounds like I was out of my mind, you know, but it, it adds another dimension to the picture. It's really amazing. But the, but the one that's on the thing you can buy in the store is just like a record. It's just, it doesn't do that. And it makes the movie less of an experience. So part of what I intend to do after this is all over, because I'm going to screen some of Scorsese's other films with this technology, that I, I put the original mix back on the film, and I put this new technology on it. It's called Real Feel, which makes digital feel like analog. It makes you feel like you're listening to a vinyl record or something, you know. So this sound is kind of like watching the movie at 70 millimeter with a mag stripe, you know, like in a, not a digital soundtrack, you know. So that's what the advantage of seeing it tonight is. So I hope you enjoy it and we will talk afterwards. That's an interesting point. Okay, so I did this in uh, Austin, Texas for Naris, you know, the people that give out the Grammys, right? So we screened the film and I showed the difference. And actually, I have the, the DVD in the player that you can buy. And I, would, I was thinking of maybe playing about five minutes of it so you could hear the difference. But if you want to, we'll do that. But if you don't want to, we don't have to do that. But Anyway, the thing is, in Texas, it almost caused a near riot. I mean, these people were all completely pissed off and said, you know, I want my money back. I mean, and I suggested they write a letter to Scorsese, which maybe we could arrange that, you know. Um, but uh, the guy that was the head of Naris in Texas left, and it just all got dissipated, and it never happened. But I'm going to go see Marty after this. I've got, I'm going to, we're screening this a few, about five times over the next two weeks in, in, in uh, Ottawa or in the adjoining areas. And I've also got Taxi Driver in Mean Streets with this technology on the audio. And so, that, you know, that's an experience in itself. And it's amazing what it does. And then what will happen is uh, I'll go see Scorsese after this and I'll just, you know, make I'm going to make a real strong pitch for, and I, I've been talking to Robbie Robertson about it too, but making a strong pitch to re-release the DVD because that the DVD you can buy is a different mix. It was mixed by, uh, funny enough, a protege of mine, which I didn't know that he did it, but Scorsese, myself, and Robbie did not go to the mix. Paul Allen paid for it, and it was mixed at a studio in Seattle. And, uh, and the guy, you know, when I saw him at the screening of the re-release of the DVD, you know, he thought I was going to kill him, you know. Like when I saw him, he said, are you going to kill me? And I said, no. And I didn't really get, I mean, I got a headache from it. That was the interesting thing. The digital audio gave me a headache. And, and then I went with a friend of mine, Blondie Chaplin, who's an amazing singer and friends with all these people. And so he said, man, it's not the same. And that's because of the thing that Martin Scorsese asked me to do when we mixed the film, which was, as I said earlier, Push, make the audio match the picture, right? And so I, I guess maybe you might have noticed that. You can always hear the most important thing going on at the moment. That's the whole point, right? That's the that's what when you get a good front of house picture at a concert, it's because they're not asleep and they get that concept, right? So, because that's really what you want is just to be able to hear what you're seeing, you know. And so, this I mean I've never heard this film sound better than I just heard it, and thanks to the Tetra speakers and the good amplifiers and all the rest of it, but it's kind of amazing, you know, because I, I just started putting this technology on DVDs recently, and, and uh, it's fascinating to me, because I'm sure all of you have experienced the thing with the digital cable or DVDs where you, you know, end up rewinding a little bit to hear a line you couldn't hear, or, you know, 
or you can't hear the dialogue loud enough and you turn it up and then the music comes on is too loud and then you turn it back down, you turn it back up, you turn it back down and, and you go through all this crap and it's, and the real feel fixes that, all of that. I mean, that's just, the thing is that we're all being completely stressed out by digital audio, you know, between telephones and everything else. It's just like fluorescent lighting. It's exactly the same effect on the human body, exactly. <laughs> And so I spent 24 years figuring this out, and it was not easy. And the interesting thing was the final thing that got me over the hump was an article that was published in Germany before they agreed to release digital audio on the public in Germany. They published this study and uh, before it could be on cable or on, in, in any format in broadcast, radio or anything. It's a 24-page paper, and it's all about the way the human brain works and how the audio gets into the brain. And, and he, So I had to study all of that, and I had to figure out how to make this work. And the thing that's interesting about it is that you can do a kinesiology test, you can do a muscle test, and if you try to, you know, like you put your arm out and somebody presses on it, and you try to resist, right? So you do that with no music. Put on a CD at home and try doing that and you'll find you cannot hold your arm up, right? So that became the way we could measure if what we were doing was working or not. And that's why all the gadgets and all the stuff that's out there to fix MP3s and fix the sound of digital and all that, all that I ever do is I, I listen to the things and I do a muscle test and if it doesn't muscle test strong, I don't even listen to it because, and there's never been anything that works. And it's all because they're treating the symptoms and I'm treating the cause. And so when you treat the cause, the symptoms get cured automatically, right? So, but it took 24 years to figure this out. So th it was a great, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm very grateful that it sounded as good as it did. And, and it, you can play it loud, which you can't do with digital. You can't play digital loud like that and not have it hurt.